is Kenny Lee. I'm the pastor here at Marble United Methodist Church. If you're joining us virtually, we're so happy to have you here and worship with us. And I'm excited to see everybody here in the room. This is our crowd seem to be getting a little better week on week. I looked at Facebook this morning, my Phillips um, Community Against Crime, Phillips County Community Against Crime, which has been my source for active case information. We are under 100 active cases today. So it's like 90 for active cases. So, so we are definitely headed in the right direction. I'm excited um, about that because that tells me that we can start looking toward resuming some of our normal activities like Sunday school and programming. Um, those of you that teach this, I encourage you to start having those conversations. Kids, We, I had a conversation with Mr. Braun and Miss. Charlotte, last week we're getting ready to start that youth. I'll have a date for that in the next week or so. Just be patient with me. I'm still trying to figure out how we're going to make all this work. We're still looking for volunteers for our WOW program. Miss Penny is committed to that program. We need another person to come alongside us and that help us with our littles. If that's something that you can do. We would love to have you be a part of that programming. We really can't start it without an additional volunteer or some commitments from a number of people that they'll take a rotation. As we enter into this time together, I want to invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather here, both virtually and in person, to experience the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. God, we thank you because your spirit has brought us to this place. Lord, you have called us your own and you are excited as we are to be here in this moment of worship. Lord, help us to open our hearts and our lives to your Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
So, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. So we already do that, don't we? Sure we do. Okay, who can tell me what happened at Easter? And what happened after he died on the cross? What did they do with his body? And then what happened? All right. Y'all are smarter than I thought. So the next line is, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and set it at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. So we already believe that, don't we? We know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and they buried him, and then on the third day he rose from the dead, and he went to heaven. All right, you ready for the next one? This one's yours. <laughs> what are we doing right now? Where are we? At church. At church. Do we, why don't we come to church?
Dolan, Connie Powell, Lamont Bowen, Dan Bennett, Hugh Bonner, Gene Shackelford, Robert Bowery, Ollie Hill, David and Grace Henderson, Stanley and Elise Bartlett, Jeff Sparks, Amanda Magnus, Alex Lee, the family of Bobby Steiner, our students, their families and staff, our continued prayer list, medical personnel, first responders, church leaders, church family, bishop and cabinet, military and law enforcement, our country, victims of coronavirus, and the family of Randolph Snyder. Any other concerns? Yes, ma'am. Did Randolph Snyder pass away? Yes. Yes. When?
hear us as we offer our confessions.
is a summary of our Christian faith. It, it contains the non-negotiables of Christianity. Now, there are educated people in our midst and some in our pulpits who don't all agree with everything that is in this Apostles' Creed, but this is one of the oldest extant documents that have been passed down to us from the early church. This dates back to somewhere in the middle of the second century in Rome. Rome, a place where persecution was around every corner, where there were heresies being taught that were drawing people away from the faith. And in response to those heresies and in response to a schism, a, a difference of opinion between a couple of bishops as to who was the rightful bishop in Rome, this baptismal covenant, this confession, was began to be used by people as they entered into the life of the church. This Apostles' Creed is our rule of faith. I want to share with you our Old Testament reading and make a few comments on that. This is the work of our prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, and I'll begin reading with verse 1. But now this is what the Lord says, He cr who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba for your stead. You are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, understanding, and living out of this word that we share. This prophet offers encouragement in a time in Israel's life when they had been living in, in exile in, in Babylonia and, and then under Persia as Babylonian Empire is conquered by the Persian. And these people are called from a place of comfort where they have lived all of their lives, many of them, hardly anybody who remembers that exile coming out of Jerusalem is still alive. And, and through the prophet who speaks in God's own voice, who uses the first person divine to communicate, we hear the words, you are mine. I formed you. I have chosen you. You are my treasured possession. You are precious. This word precious is not used very often in any part of the biblical text. And when it is, it's, it, it means something that's very costly. It, it means sometimes even your very life. God looks at you and sees not what the fall has left of you, but God sees you in all of your potential. God has called you out to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. God has reminded us today as we read this text that He created us for a purpose, that His purposes will be accomplished in us, that He loved us so much that He <laughs> sent His only Son the Son who existed before creation. The Son who was and is and is to come. The one who holds the keys to hell and death. He sent Jesus Christ, fully God, fully human, to this earth to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. Can I get an amen? amen. Are, are, we all, are we all here? Everybody's present. We're tracking. Because I'm going to share the gospel text with you today. And I can feel a little head of steam building up so y'all get ready. 
This is John's Gospel, chapter 1, and I'll begin reading with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the life of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. What a beautiful, poetic passage of Scripture. Both of these passages have this, this lilt and cadence to them. And, and they remind us, taking us all the way back to the beginning. The beginning where we were at last week in Genesis. When we remembered that God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, was present in that moment of creation. And that through the Word of God, the one who we know as the Logos, or the, the, the very person of God, Jesus Christ, was there and spoke creation into being. That the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters of the deep and the void and the darkness, the chaotic elements of that creation story. And that God, three persons, but the same essence, the same being, created everything out of chaos and darkness. And John, as he writes this for us, he takes us back once again to that story, just as Isaiah did, back to that creation moment, reminding us that God, in the person of Jesus Christ, was the agent of creation. That through that act of just speaking, everything came into being. And that this same word of God came as a human being Jesus Christ, the Apostles' Creed, tells us, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. We know that from Luke's Gospel when we read that part of the narrative at Christmas time, usually at Christmas Eve, we're reminded that this young person said yes to God when yes might mean her own life. And that through the power of God's Holy Spirit coming over her, that she conceived a child in her virginity, and that Jesus Christ was born to a impoverished family, a blue-collar family. I don't know about you, but that gives me a little hope. I come from a blue-collar family. Do any of y'all come from a blue-collar family? My, my dad was working-class people, a carpenter, a cabinet maker, a logger, anything else he could do to keep his family. Lord, I've been a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker, and a preacher. And I'm thankful for God's call in my life. I'm, I'm grateful to be able to stand here and try to open up for you some of the deep things of God and, and help us to understand our faith. And the, the Immaculate Conception and the Virgin Birth, that is a non-negotiable in my world. That is the essence of God's proof of who Jesus Christ is. And that same Jesus Christ walked the dusty streets of Palestine in the, in the first century common era. Never traveled more than 75 miles from his home, and yet his life began a complete new religion. Jesus came as one of the chosen people, fully God and yet fully man at the same time. And he had two titles, Son of Man, which was a messianic title. It was a, a title of, 
apocalyptic nature, meaning that God was going to eventually bring all things to a conclusion. And then, Son of God, we know that Jesus is, in fact, the very Son of God, that He has existed outside of time, inside of time, has always been, is, and always will be. The same Jesus Christ who took on humanity, laying aside his deity, he came and knew hunger and cold, sorrow, sickness, pain, loss. He took what was meant for me when I was unable to take it on for myself. He saved me, delivered me from sin and darkness from slavery to death. I no longer have to fear because death is all out of options. And death had to retreat when Jesus came out of that tomb. We know that he was arrested, falsely accused, rejected by his own people, the Jewish people, and convicted by the highest court in the land, the Sanhedrin. And they, trying to wash their hands of the iniquity they took Rome into their conspiracy, and Rome executed our Savior in one of the most cruel capital punishments that man has ever devised. In Jesus Christ, God took on every negative, wrong thing that humanity has ever been able to do, and, and it, all of that was directed at His Son, Jesus Christ, and God negated the negativity. God destroyed. God conquered death and the grave. Jesus Christ in those three days that he was in that borrowed tomb after he had suffered for us and poured out his blood for us. He went down to hell and shook those gates off the hinges and took the keys of hell and death in his hand and went and preached the gospel to those in prison there. That is in Peter's epistle. I invite you to look for that for yourself. We omit that part of the Apostles' Creed that is the most ancient part. He descended to the dead. But that's real, y'all, and it's backed up by Scripture. And when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, He gave us the opportunity to be adopted sons and daughters, that if we believe, if we aspire to this credo that we are walking through over the course of the next several weeks, we believe in God the Father Almighty, we believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, that Jesus is in fact God's expression of an ultimate love for humanity, that in God came in all of His glory, and yet that glory was disguised in the frame of an ordinary human being who lived an extraordinary life, a sinlessly perfect life, something that you and I can't do in order that we can be who God in Isaiah says we are, His precious sons and daughters. In the name of God and Christ and the Holy Spirit, Amen. you to pray with me before Julian comes and we sing our hymn of invitation. <laughs> Holy God, we come to this moment in complete awe and wonder, just trying to wrap our hearts and minds around what Jesus did for us, how you could possibly love us who are so unlovely how you could call us precious we are so unworthy and yet Lord you gave the most precious thing that you possessed you gave your only son for us to show us the depth and breadth of your love to call us into a sweet communion as people who follow the way you sent the way the truth and the life in order that we might find our way, know the truth, and have eternal life. 
Lord, open us more fully to the power of your Holy Spirit. Teach us to follow hard after Jesus. Pray this in his precious name. Amen.